time for this week's edition of Things That Annoy Brett. I do sometimes feel like this is just a channel of me complaining about things that are kayaking related, but, um, but this one's serious. Let's look at a couple of different boats. In particular, let's look at the seats. This is actually a really nice service that this lake offers in that you can pay a fee and store your boat here so you don't have to transport your boat. So we will be looking at a number of boats that are upside down. Um, this is a native watercraft. The seat is upside down and hanging, but you can see really big back panel, but in general, not a great seat, but really big back panel, almost that big. This is a good one. Ellie Sound. This is a great boat. Really big seat back. See how it is higher than the combing. Nice padding in the seat, um, but really nice big seat back. This boat should have a cockpit cover on it. This is actually very smart, except this is filled with water. Um, if you can't get a cockpit cover for your boat, just wrap it in industrial plastic. That actually works pretty well, um, but it must have leaked because there is definitely some water in there. The things I do for video. Okay. This is a wilderness system boat. It's hard to see. Oh, there we go. Let's do this. This is a wilderness systems boat. This is the phase three seat. I'll put a bigger, better picture of it. Um, but again, you see seat back really high. Might be because it's hanging, but it is. it comes up above the cockpit coming. Very nice adjustable seat. Seat adjusts all three directions. Their paddle is in here, which is not very smart, um, but, uh, but that's really nice. And I'm gonna reattach that to the way that I found it. And again, this is the Perception Zone outfitting. Uh, again, really big cushy seat. Lifts here, lifts here, adjusts this way, goes up and down. You know, pretty standard, pretty basic. Okay, so the thing to understand is that every kayak company has their own seat with a fancy name. They have Zone, uh, Wilderness Systems has the, the Phase 3, uh, I forget what Delta's is called, but it's as guilty as any of the others of these problems. So Delta has the same sort of thing. This is the contour seat system. It moves forward and back. The back of it goes up and down. And this way, and is actually pretty comfy. Uh, it's not a bad seat. Don't need that. It's not a bad seat. But it suffers from the same problems as all seats. So my problem with kayak seats is that they get in the way of everything we want to do, right? In terms of torso rotation, a big kayak seat gets in the way. In terms of getting back into the boat, uh, if you've wet exited, they tend to get in the way. Even just getting in the boat, I frequently see people um, as they're sliding into the seat their bottom hits the seat back which pulls forward and goes right where they want to be and and that's all of those are problems um, I will say I frequently see in students uh, frequently I see students with weak core muscles and that illustrates itself a couple ways the first is that they can't physically rotate uh, I talked to a yoga instructor about this once and she was like yes I see it all the time people can't rotate they have no rotational core ability, right? Um, it also uh, becomes obvious because they can't sit up straight, right? They're so used to sitting in chairs that support them that the thought of just sitting on their bottom on the floor of the hull of the kayak is ridiculous to them. It can't happen. Uh, and so... I say over and over again, kayaking will not give you big, strong arms. I clearly do not have big, strong arms, um, but it will give you good posture and good core strength, but you've got to be sitting up straight to get those two benefits. So I frequently see people who just simply can't sit like this for an hour or two. Um, so that's 
the biggest problem is that that seat gets in the way, but we need that seat. A lot of people need that seat because they don't have core strength, but they can't get the core strength because they're sitting in a kayak that has a seat like that. So let's talk about what a seat should look like. Okay, this is a PH Romany. Romany? Romany. Romany. And this is what a kayak seat should look like. Let me angle this down a little bit more. Notice how it's below the height of the cockpit combing. Um, I also really love this that this bulkhead is angled. It's easier to get water out of here. This is a beautifully designed boat. Um, but none of this seat back will get in your way while you're trying to do stuff, while you're trying to re-enter your boat, while you're trying to rotate. Um, a little bit hard for some people, and it should really have a couple holes in it to drain water out, but um, absolutely, this is the, what a seat back should look like. Super nice space under here for your bilge pump. Okay, so there should be no question. If you are watching this channel and you've been paying attention and you've been watching for a little while, you know that when I'm talking about kayaks, for me, I'm talking about high-performing touring kayaks. We're seeing these seats even in most of those. There are a handful that have better seat options. The Nigel Dennis's, the PHs, have nice high performance seat backs. The Delta does not. It's my one complaint with the Delta. Uh, and so, why do they do it? Why do they put big seat backs that get in the way of all the things that you want to do in a kayak? in a boat that's designed to be high performance, like my Delta 17. Uh, and the reason is that they need to sell boats. And this is how people, most people, shop for boats. Oh, look how big and comfy that, that seat is. I'd like to sit in that for three hours. And that's about the limit. A lot of people choose boats by the seat and how comfortable it looks. Native watercraft, I swear to God, they must have built the boat around that seat because the seat looks like a lawn chair uh, and completely gets in the way of everything that we want to do in a sea kayak. So there are a couple of boats that have nice high performance seat backs. Um, the Wilderness Systems Tempest has a great low profile seat back. I'm not a fan of that boat, but I like the seat back. The PH Romanes, 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 I don't know, have almost no seat back. They're perfect. I love them. And that's what I was emulating in my old Delta when I built that seat back. And it was close, but not quite. I got a new boat. I need to deal with that seat back. I'm going to leave it as is until uh, that boat starts to fall apart and I can justify removing the seat back. Years ago, Delta allowed me to test a seat that they were prototyping, which was a low profile seat back. It never went into production. It didn't hold up real well. Um, and that was sort of what started my progression of, uh, of having to rebuild my seat back, was I switched to that. I didn't want to go back to the full one, and it became sort of a hodgepodge of parts. What can you do if you want to get higher performance out of your boat, if you don't want a seat back getting in the way when you're rotating, when you're sitting in the boat and, and doing a, a stroke with good torso rotation? What can you do when your seat back is getting in your way when you're getting in and out of your boat? What can you do about your seat back when you're doing uh, self rescues or assisted rescues and that seat back is getting in the way? The only thing that you can really do is lower the seat all the way down and recline it as far as it goes. And then it's super important that when you're paddling, you're not leaning back in your seat like I was just doing in this seat, right? Um, you want to be sitting up straight. Your weight is on your bottom, on your sits bones, uh, and your feet are out in front of you. That's our goal. Um, that will give you the clearance to do, in conjunction, sitting like that will give you the clearance to do good torso rotation, which is important for your stroke as well as things like sweep turns uh, and draw strokes, all of those things where you're turning your whole body. Uh, and also, most importantly, when you're trying to get back in your boat after you've had a wet exit. That is the real nightmare for me is 
Uh, people have a wet exit in bad conditions. They end up falling out of their boat. They can get back in the boat, but they're fighting the whole time with the seat back because it's getting in the way. Uh, and that's the real problem. That's the thing that we're sort of working around. Okay, end of my weekly This is Things That Annoy Bread About Kayaking. Uh, if you like this content, you can buy me a cup of coffee or a whiskey on coffee. There's a link down below. My books are available on Amazon. There's a link down below. Um, usually right around 10 bucks for the Kindle version. I think around 12 bucks for the paperback version. Uh, and that is everything you need to know to get comfortable paddling a kayak. It is designed, the Simple Guide for Kayaking is designed for people who are new to paddling. Um, Go is designed for people who want to do adventures. And it has all of the gear lists for my kayaking trips in Alaska, a friend's cycling trip on the Blue Ridge Parkway. What was the third one in there? the third one. Oh, backpacking on the Appalachian Trail. All the gear for backpacking on the Appalachian Trail. So those links to those books are available down below uh, on Amazon or Apple Books. Uh, if this is working for you, hit like, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you outside.